Hello, and welcome again to another video on the topic of straight line graphs. So we've had two videos already, going through the basics in lesson one, going on to something a bit more difficult in lesson two, and now we're going to take it a bit more further in this video, lesson three. So before we get started properly, let's have a look at some warm-up questions. Four questions, almost as ever, really. So try these first. These will give you a bit of a recap into what we need to be thinking about for the AS and A-level type questions on straight line graphs. If you get stuck, use the video to help you, but please try the questions yourselves first, rather than just passively listening to the video. If you try them yourself independently, you'll get most benefit from these questions. Okay, so pause the video now and try them. When you're ready to see the answers, press play. So, assuming you've done that, as I've asked, let's have a look at the solution to question one. So question one, we want to find the equation of a straight line with gradient five that passes through the point two, four. And we need to give our answer in the standard form, y equals mx plus c. I'll just correct that there, that was a slight error, as you can see. That should be saying uh, y equals mx plus c. I'll leave this in, this mistake, just so you can see, obviously, nobody's perfect, <laughs> least of all me. So y equals mx plus c. So we need to think about how we can do this. So we have the gradient, which is five, and we know a point it goes through. And so what we can do is we can use this form of the equation of a straight line, which is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. This is very useful if we know the gradient and a point. So all we need to do now is just substitute in what we know. So we do know a point on the line. We know the y coordinate of that point is 4. We know the x coordinate of this point is 2. We also know that the gradient m is 5. So we can just substitute in these values and see what drops out, and then we have our answer. And so we're going to have y minus 4 equals m, which is 5, brackets x minus x1, which we know to be 2. So I'll just call code that just for consistency. And y1 was 4. So if we take this and expand it out, 5 times x is 5x, 5 multiplied by minus 2 is minus 10. Then we can rearrange this by adding 4 to both sides. We see that y must be 5x minus 6, because minus 10 plus 4 is minus 6. So we've conquered, tackled, and completed question 1 from the warm-up. Question two, we have a straight line passes through the points minus two, nine, and seven, minus 45. Find the equation of this line in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are positive integers. So importantly, a, b, c must be not only integers, but also positive. So we know two points on this straight line. It would seem natural if we know two points to calculate the gradient. Okay, so let's just do this first of all. So the gradient between any two points is a change in y between those two points, divided by the change in x between those two points. So if we take this point first, so we have 9 minus minus 45. Divide that by x, so minus 2 minus 7. So if we compute that, 9 minus minus 45 is 9 plus 45, which is 54. Minus 2 minus another 7 is minus 9. 54 divided by 9 would be 6. So 54 divided by minus 9 gives us minus 6. And again, feel free to use your calculator to check these if ever you're unsure. So we now know that the gradient is minus 6. We can substitute this into our 
general form of the straight line. So what I'd suggest we do is we could use y equals mx plus c because that is still current, still useful. So our y in this case is 9. The gradient we've worked out is minus 6. The x-coordinate we know is minus 2. The intercept we don't know, so let's leave that as c. So if we simplify this, we have we have 9, did I put minus 9 there? Slick of the hand. So 9 equals minus 6 multiplied by minus 12, that's, uh, I'm sorry, minus 6 multiplied by minus 2 is positive 12 plus c. Therefore, we see that c has to be minus 3. So in the form y equals mx plus c, we have that y equals minus 6x minus 3. The gradient was negative 6, the y-axis intercept was negative 3. But we want a, b and c to be positive, so if we add 6x and add 3 to both sides, what we'll get is 6x plus y plus 3 equals 0. And that's our final answer for question 2. For question 3, we have a line that's parallel to a given line that passes through a point 3, 11. We need to find the equation of the line parallel to the one which has been given, given our answer in the form y equals mx plus c. So the line we're after isn't the one we've been given, the line we're after is parallel to this one. Okay, so what I would suggest we do is to work out the gradient of this line and then think about what the equation of the line which has the same gradient as this one, which goes through this point, what the equation of that one must be. So first of all, let's just think about 3x plus 8y minus 4 equals 0. So if we re rearrange this so that we have 8y, if we take away 3x on both sides, we have minus 3x, and add 4 to both sides, we have 8y equals minus 3x plus 4. We can then divide through by 8, so we get that y must be minus 3 eighths x plus a half. Now, plus a half doesn't really matter. All that matters here is we know the gradient is minus 3 eighths. Okay, so any line parallel to this one, which we just worked out is this written in different form, any line parallel to this one has to have a gradient of minus 3 eighths. So we're told that we're hunting for a line which is parallel to this one, in other words, has to have this gradient, and it has to go through this point here. Okay, so we know the gradient of the line we need to work out. We know a point that's on the line we need to work out. So again, what we can use here is good old y equals mx plus c. So we want it in y equals mx plus c, so we can use this and just substitute in what we now know. So we know a known point on the line is 3, 11. So our y can be 11. The gradient needs to be the same because it's parallel, so our gradient is going to be minus 3 eighths. A known x-coordinate, we can use 3, then obviously plus c, whatever c happens to be. So if we work this out and rearrange, we have 11. Minus 3 eighths multiplied by 3 is minus 9 eighths. Again, plus c. Therefore, if we take what we have and add 9 eighths to both sides, well, 11 is the same as 88 over 8. So 88 over 8 plus 9 over 8, that's the same as 97 over 8. 
If you don't believe me, feel free to use this thing here, which is known as a class with calculator. So 11 plus 9 over 8, 97 over 8. So now we know what C is, we know what the gradient is, so we know what the equation of the needed line is in the form y equals mx plus c. So y must equal minus 3 eighths x plus 97 over 8, or 97 eighths. So that's question 3 sorted. Question 4. There's a few different, in fact, there's infinitely many different options you could use for question four. Um, for each straight line below, just give an equation, just one equation of a line that's perpendicular to the particular straight line given. So it depends on what you remember from GCSE. And if you don't remember it from GCSE, we're going to cover it in today's lesson, luckily anyway. But the important thing to remember is if you have a line given, then a line perpendicular to that will have a gradient minus 1 over the gradient of that given line. It's the negative reciprocal we're after. And so this line here, that's an invisible 1. And so a line perpendicular to that will have a gradient of minus 1 divided by 1. So for A, although there's infinitely many lines we could choose that's perpendicular to y equals x, I'm just going to pick y equals minus x because 1 divided by minus 1 is minus 1. For b, the gradient of this one is 2. So a gradient of a line perpendicular to this one will have gradient minus 1 divided by 2. In other words, any line perpendicular to this one will have a gradient of minus a half. So I'm going to write minus a half x. The negative reciprocal of 2 is minus a half. In the same way for c, the gradient of a line perpendicular to this one will have a gradient of minus 1 divided by this. Minus 1 divided by minus a third is positive 3. So a line perpendicular to this one will have gradient positive 3. So I'm going to write y equals 3x. It does say just give an equation of a line that's perpendicular to this particular straight line. So I could put y equals 3x plus 2, y equals 3x plus a million, there's infinitely many options I could give, but these are the simplest ones, so I'm going to leave it in the simplest possible way. Okay, there's other options, but these will do for our purposes. Next up, I want to talk about another form of an equation of a straight line, which you won't have seen before, I don't believe. So what we've done so far is we've seen three different versions for writing the equation of a straight line graph. So there's a general form, which is ax plus by plus c equals 0, the more familiar form from GCSE, which is y equals mx plus c, and this new form you may have seen, which is the gradient point version, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. There's also another version of this, which is fairly rare, but does have its uses. So what we can do is we can define a straight line just using two characteristics of a particular straight line. So, so far, the characteristics we've used with y equals mx plus c, for example, the two characteristics are the gradient and the intercept. So one characteristic is the gradient, the other characteristic is the intercept. For this version here, the point gradient form, one characteristic is its gradient, the other characteristic is any known point on that line, x1, y1. Another way we could do it with two characteristics is where one characteristic is one point and the second characteristic is a second point on the line. And so we can actually define a straight line based on knowing one point and a second point. So what I'd suggest we might want to do is to draw a little diagram of this. So here's a general straight line with positive gradient. You could draw one going down if you wanted to. I've put in red the points I'm going to label. So one point I'm going to call x1, y1. The second point I'm going to call x2, y2. 
we can now consider coming up with a definition of a gradient for this straight line based on the coordinates we know, these two points. So if you think about the distances horizontally and vertically between x1, y1 and x2, y2, then the vertical distance is going to be y2 minus y1 and the horizontal distance is going to be x2 minus x1. And so we can put this into a different format. So using these two known points, we can say that the gradient, which is given by the letter M, is the change in Y, which is Y2 minus Y1, divided by the change in X, which is X2 minus X1. However, what we can do is use this version to go one step further. So we can say, however, or but, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So I've just stolen that from a more familiar form which we've used in the last lesson. Okay, so we can use this. So if I were to rearrange this for m as a subject, we can see that m is going to be y minus y1 divided by this in the brackets, which is x minus x1. And so what I can do here is take this m and substitute in this expression for m. And so what we're going to end up with now is y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And that is in itself a new type of equation for a straight line. It's a bit entangled, it's an ugly looking equation, but it is an equation. It's got the variables y and x here, and we've got y1, y2, x1, x2, all in here. So that's another form for the equation of a straight line. So if you wanted to, we could multiply through by this denominator at the bottom, x minus x1. So another form of this equation, could say it's or same as y minus y1 multiplying through by this x minus x1 we have x minus x1 on the top divided by x2 minus x1 all of this multiplied by y2 minus y1 now that isn't a particularly easy formula to remember but it's worth knowing that it's just another way we could work out these problems. So knowledge is power and all. You don't really need to remember this. You don't need to commit it to memory. But it is nice to know that you can work out an equation of a straight line just based on knowing two points and nothing else. So that's worth a mention, I feel. Now we're going to mention something about perpendicular lines, which again, you probably have seen at some point at GCSE. So perpendicular lines are right angles to each other, okay, so they meet head-on at a 90 degree angle. So if you know the gradient of one line, you can find the gradient of the other. So if a line has a gradient of m, the line perpendicular to that particular line will have a gradient of minus 1 over m, the negative reciprocal of it. And if two lines are perpendicular, saying the same thing in a different way, the product of those gradients will be minus 1. I'm going to try to illustrate this with the help of a diagram, which we've got here. And so we've got L1 and a line perpendicular to it going through it called L2. So we've got two triangles here which you might want to consider. So looking at these two pinkish triangles, these triangles are completely congruent. They're identical in size and shape. 
So looking at the triangle connected to L1, the gradient of this one is a change in y, which is this distance a, divided by the change in x, which is b, so a over b equals m. Whereas this one here, L2 has got gradient, the change in y for this one is now minus b, okay, because it's been flipped up and inverted, and the change in x, instead of being here, which was y, it's now here going across, which is still a. So minus b over a, which is m. So if you compare these two here, a over b and minus b over a, if you were to multiply those two together, you'd end up with minus 1, which is what we're saying here. If two lines are perpendicular, the product of their gradients is always going to be minus 1. So let's try and apply this with a worked example. So we have here a line which is perpendicular to this one and passes through the point 5 minus 7. We need to find the equation of this line. So what the best thing to do first of all would be would be to find the gradient of this one by rearranging into the form y equals mx plus c. So, oops, that's a bit of a wobbly line. I'll try and make that slightly neater. There we go. So 2y is going to equal x plus 8. If we now divide through by 2, we'll see that y equals x over 2 plus 4, because 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so a line perpendicular to this one, which I've wrote in this form, has to have a gradient which is the negative reciprocal of a half. This gradient here is a half, so the negative reciprocal of a half is minus 1 divided by a half, which will be minus 2. So the line perpendicular to y equals x over 2 plus 4 must have a gradient of minus 2. So we can write this as follows. So a perpendicular line must have gradient equal to minus 2. We can now use, because we know a point on this line, we can use y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So we can use this form to help us to work out the equation of the needed line. So right now we know the coordinate of x on this line needs to be 5. So our known x coordinate is 5, our known y coordinate is minus 7, and we know the gradient has to be equal to minus 2. So we're all good to go if we just sub in these values. So then we have y minus minus 7. Be careful of the double minuses. Equals a gradient, which is minus 2. And brackets x minus x1, which is 5. So y minus minus 7 means y plus 7. But we can expand out these brackets now. Minus 2 multiplied by x is minus 2x, and minus 2 multiplied by minus 5 is positive 10. So if we neaten this up and subtract 7 from both sides, we can see that therefore y must be negative 2x, and if we subtract 7 from both sides, 10 minus 7, we still have plus 3. And so y equals 2x plus 3 for this one. So we can now look at the next example. I've now got an actual past paper example for you to try. 
So we start by saying the line L has equation y equals 5 minus 2x. In part A, we have to show that the point P, which is at 3 minus 1, lies at L. Okay, this is so easy, it might actually be confusing. All we need to do is sub in x is 3, y is minus 1, and show that it satisfies the equation of this line. That's all we need to do. And so what we're going to do here is we say that x is 3 and y is minus 1 and see if it fits y equals 5 minus 2x. If it does, great, it's on the line. If it doesn't, it's not on the line. And so does minus 1 equal 5 minus two lots of three. So minus one equals five. Then minus two lots of three, two lots of three is six. Minus one, does that equal minus one? Yes, it does. Obviously five minus six is minus one. It's obviously on the line because five minus two times three is minus one. So that's all we need to do. We just simply substitute in the coordinates and prove that it satisfies this relationship here. So that's a very simple warm up to this question. Part B is where it gets a bit harder. We need to find an equation of a line perpendicular to L which passes through P. Give your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are integers. So what we should do, first of all, is remind ourselves of what p is. So if I go back one screen for a moment, p is 3 minus 1. So we could do far worse than just writing down what p actually was. So p was 3 minus 1. So we need an equation of a line perpendicular to L that passes through P. So we know what L is. It's got a gradient of minus 2. And so a line which is perpendicular to L, that's going to have gradient of minus 1 over minus 2, the negative reciprocal of minus 2. Minus 1 over minus 2. Obviously, it's just a half. So now we can say that because we know a point on the line, which is 3 minus 1, we know what gradient it has to have. We can use the form of the straight line y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So using this form of a straight line, our y, we just leave as, as y, minus y1. So in this case, our y1 is minus 1. So minus minus 1, just take some care here, equals a gradient, which we've worked out has to be equal to a half if it's perpendicular to it. then brackets x minus the known x coordinate of the line. And we know the known x coordinate is 3. Okay, so we can sub in 3 into this expression here. So just to be consistent with the colour coding, we've got minus 1 from the fact that this is the known y coordinate. The minus 1 comes from the fact that the gradient has to be equal to a half. And 3 is the known x coordinate. So if we neaten this up, minus minus 1, that's plus 1. So we have a half brackets x minus 3. Now, we need this equation to form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where everything's an integer. So we don't want any fractions here at all. So what I'd suggest we do is just multiply everything by 2. So if we multiply this side by 2 and the other side by 2, 
to get rid of any fractions at all, what we'll get now is 2y plus 2 equals x minus 3. So we're almost done. We just need to get this onto one side so it's all equal to 0. What I'd suggest doing is keep the x positive and subtract minus 2y from both sides, which gives us x minus 2y. And then subtract 2 from both sides. So minus 3 minus another 2 gives us minus 5 equals 0. And so we've done the first past paper example. We now have another past paper example for you to have a go at as well. So we've got now two points, P and Q, with coordinates minus 1, 6 and 9, 0 respectively. The line L is perpendicular to PQ and passes through the midpoint of PQ. So we need to find an equation for L giving the answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b and c are integers. So because we know the line L we need is perpendicular, what we can do is find the gradient of a line through p and q, then work out what the perpendicular gradient has to be. As well, we need to work out the distance between p and q and half that, so then we know the coordinates of the midpoint of p and q. So first of all, we can do this in any order, of course. I'd suggest to probably just work out the midpoint of P and Q first. So the midpoint of P and Q. What we need to do here is to average out of the X coordinates and average out of the Y coordinates. So the X coordinates are minus 1 and 9. So we divide those by 2. And the y coordinates are 6 added to 0, and we divide those by 2. And so the averaged out x coordinates, minus 1 plus 9 is 8, divide by 2. 6 plus 0 is 6, divide by 2. So the midpoint of P and Q is going to be 4, 3. So that's one step, that's one way in. So the midpoint of P and Q is 4, 3. We also need to work out the gradient of P, Q. So the gradient from P to Q, that's going to be the change in Y between P and Q. So 0 minus 6 divided by the change in X, so 9 minus minus 1 gives us minus 6 over 10 which simplifies down to minus 3 over 5. So because we want line L which is perpendicular to PQ we can say that any line which is perpendicular PQ has to have a gradient which is the negative reciprocal of the gradient of PQ. So we just write this down in words. So any line perpendicular to PQ must have a gradient which is minus 1 over minus 3 over 5. Minus is cancel and we must have a gradient of 5 thirds. So we know now that L goes to the midpoint of PQ, which is 4, 3. We know what the gradient of L must be. The gradient of L is 5 thirds because it's perpendicular to the line going through P and Q. So what we can do now is use the form of the equation Y minus Y1 equals M brackets x minus x1 because we know the known gradient and we know a point on the line. So in other words what I'm saying is we know the midpoint of PQ 
which is what this L is going to go through. We know that the x coordinate is 4, and the y coordinate of it is 3. And we also know that the gradient of the line, which is perpendicular to PQ, has this gradient 5 thirds. So we know what our M is. So if we just sub in those values, y minus 3 equals 5 thirds brackets x minus 4. Because our known x coordinate was 4, our known y coordinate was 3, and the gradient we worked out of a negative reciprocal of minus 3 fifths is 5 thirds. But of course, we want this equation in this form where we have only integers, no fractions. So what I'm going to suggest we have to do is to multiply through by 3 to get rid of this fraction at the bottom. So if we multiply the left by 3 and the right by 3, what we're going to get is 3y minus 9. And that 3 is going to vanish because divide by 3, multiply by 3 will cancel. We're just going to be left with this 5 brackets x minus 4. So the next step, we can expand this. So we get 3y minus 9 equals 5x minus 20. Final step, get everything on one side so it equals 0. Keep the 5x positive, I'd suggest. Subtract the 3y from both sides, so we have 5x minus 3y. Then add 9 to both sides, so minus 20 plus 9 becomes minus 11. And that equals 0. And so that's past paperwork, for example, to sort it out. That's done. Lastly, we've got one final worked example to show you um, from a past paper. So this is a worked example, past paper three. So we've got a line which passes through two known points, P and Q. We have to find an equation for L1 in the form Y equals MX plus C, where obviously M and C are constants. So what I'd suggest we do is just find the gradient first. So the gradient from P to Q is the change in y from p to q, so 8 minus 2. And then 11 minus minus 1. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 11 minus minus 1 is 12. 6 over 12, so it's got a gradient of a half. So the gradient from p to q is a half. And then what we can do is because we want it in the form y equals mx plus c, we can just substitute in 11, 8, or even minus 1, 2. So y equals mx plus c, we can use that to our advantage. We can substitute in a known y, a known x, and the known gradient. So we can use y as 8. The gradient worked out as a half. We know x to be 11 for this particular known point. And we don't know what c is yet, but we will do. So we knew the gradient was a half, so m is a half. And C, we don't know, but we're going to find this out now. So 8 equals a half multiplied by 11, which is 11 over 2, plus C. So therefore, C is going to be 8 minus 11 over 2. And you can use your calculator for this. In fact, let's do it now, just to see what happens. So 8 minus 11 over 2.
that gives you 5 over 2. And so C equals 5 over 2. So in other words, the equation of a straight line in the form y equals mx plus c is y equals a half x plus 5 over 2. That's part A sorted. Part B, rather than having just line L1, we now have a line L2, which passes through a point R, which is 10, 0. So R is on the x-axis, and it's perpendicular to L1. We're told that the lines L1 and L2 intersect at the point S. So we need to find out where they intersect. In other words, what are the coordinates of this particular point S? So what we need to do first of all is work out the gradient, I would suggest, of this line L2. So it's all that L2 is perpendicular to L1. So what we need to remember now is that the gradient of L2 is going to be the negative reciprocal of L1. So let's just remind ourselves what we had from part A. From part A, we had L1 was a half x plus 5 over 2. So the gradient, therefore, of L2 is going to be the negative reciprocal minus 1 over the gradient of L1. So minus 1 over half is going to be minus 2. And more than that, we can now use the idea y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1 because we actually know a point that L2 goes through because we know that L2 goes through r which is at 10, 0. So we can substitute this in and so L2 is going to go through 10 so we know an x coordinate we also know a y coordinate, which is 0. We also know the gradient of L2 is going to be minus 2, because we're told it's perpendicular to L1. L1 had a gradient of minus a half. Sorry, L1 had a gradient of a half. So L2 has a gradient of minus 1 over half, which is minus 2. So we can just substitute in what we know now. So y minus 0, in other words y, equals minus 2 brackets x minus x1 which is 10. So I'll just continue to colour code in what we know. So y1 was 0 and the gradient of L2 needs to be minus 2. So if we expand this out and simplify we have y equals minus 2 times x, which is minus 2x, and minus 2 multiplied by minus 10, that's plus 20. Okay, so that's L2. But we need to find where they intersect. So they intersect at a point S. So at the point S is where this y coincides with this y. And so what I'm going to suggest is we substitute in this particular value for y. So y is minus 2x plus 20. Okay, so what we could do is just substitute this in for y here. There's other ways of doing it. This is just one suggestion. So now we're going to have a y, which is minus 2x plus 20. equals a half x plus 5 over 2. So we can add 2x to both sides to give us 20 equals 1. A half plus 2, that's 2 and a half, which is the same as 5 over 2 x plus 5 over 2. 
20 is the same as 40 halves, so 40 halves minus 5 halves. If we take 5 over 2, it leaves us 35 over 2, which equals 5 over 2x. So if we then divide through by 5 over 2, we're going to see that x must equal 7. Then once we know x is 7, we can substitute that into y equals minus 2x plus 20. So if we then substitute into put y equals minus 2x plus 20, see that y must equal minus 2 lots of 7, which is minus 14, and minus 14 plus 20 equals positive 6. So y is 6, x is 7, so therefore the coordinates of s must be 7 and 6. So I've just worked out the coordinates of s. Part C, show that the length RS is 3 root 5. Well, we've just worked out that S was 7, 6. We need to remind ourselves what R is. Well, R was 10, 0. So what we could do is draw a little diagram for this, if we so wanted to. So, yeah, just to remind you from point B, the coordinates of S are 7, 6. So S is 7, 6, and R is 10, 0. So we could think about the difference between the y-coordinates and the x-coordinates. So from 7 to 10, the difference in the x-coordinates are 3, and the difference in the y-coordinates from 6 to 0 are 6. And so using Pythagoras, we can see that rs is going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared. Okay? So 6 squared is 36, 3 squared is 9, so rs is the square root of 36 plus 9, 36 plus 9 is 45, now 45 is the same as 9 multiplied by 5. So we can partition this root 45 into root 9, root 5, because 9 times 5 is 45. But root 9 is a square number. 9 is a square number, I mean to say. So root 9 is 3, and then root 5 we can leave as root 5, and then we have it. So rs is 3 root 5. In other words, in terms of this expression here, 3 root 5 we get exactly the same. Finally, part D, hence or otherwise, find the exact area of triangle PQR. Now again, you don't need to draw a diagram, but I would recommend that a diagram makes it easier. So for this one, what we're going to have is L1. Okay, so L1 is the line that goes from P, which was minus 1, 2, and Q up here, which was 11, 8. And so that's L1. In this question, we also worked out uh, what R was. We were told that R was 10, 0. And we are told that this line L2, which is perpendicular to L1, intersects L1 at the point 7, 6, which is S. And so this line L2, which is perpendicular to L1, goes through R and 7, 6. So we can draw in L2 now. And because L2 is perpendicular to L1, we have this little right angle triangle here to just denote that L2 and L1 are perpendicular. So because you want the area of PQR, that means from P to Q to R. So this is this big triangle all the way throughout. So we want to work out the area of this yellow highlighted triangle PQR. So because this is a right angle, and we did work out what the line L2 was, we worked out that the distance from R to S, to SR, we worked it out to be 3 root 5. 
Okay, so I can just highlight this in here. This distance here is 3 root 5. And this is a perpendicular distance. So what we can remember now from GCSE is the area of the triangle formula. The area of a triangle is half multiplied by the base, the base rather, <laughs> multiplied by the perpendicular height. So we've got the perpendicular height because it's perpendicular to this base here. So it's a half. The base we can think of as being from P to Q. And the perpendicular height, the perpendicular distance from PQ going to the other point is 3 root 5. Okay, so we know in a sense the height is 3 root 5. We just need to work out the distance from P to Q. So let's just do this over here. So from P to Q, let's just think about the distance from P to Q. So from P to Q, the x value goes from minus 1 to 11. So the distance along is 12. So if you use Pythagoras and say the distance along is 12 squared, Pythagoras is the square root of a squared plus b squared, remember, and the vertical distance from 8 to 2, that's distance of 6, and so that's going to be 6 squared. Now, in case you're not sure where these numbers are coming from, if you want a bit more clarification, I'm just going to draw in a diagram to show you where these values are coming from. Okay, so from P to Q going along, and from P to Q up and down, from minus 1 to 11, that's a distance of 12. And from 2 up to 8, that's a distance of 6. And so we're looking at this distance here in yellow being the square root of 6 squared plus 12 squared. So that's where these figures are coming from, if you're not sure. So 12 squared is 144, and 6 squared is 36. And so that's the same as the square root of 180. But 180 is a multiple of 5. 180 is actually 5 multiplied by 36. And so that's root 36, root 5. But of course root 36, because 36 is a square number, that's the same as 6. And so the length PQ, which is root 36, root 5, is the same as root 6, root 5. So that's going to help us massively. So if we were to what a PQ is, this diagonal distance here, that's 6 root 5. And so we can substitute this in. So if you have a triangle, which is half times PQ times 3 root 5, that's half multiplied by 6 root 5. Times 3 root 5. So look at the numbers here, half times 6 times 3, well 6 times 3 is 18 and half of 18 is 9. So half times 6 times 3, that's going to give us 9, and we're going to have root 5 multiplied by itself. So 9 root 5 root 5, root 5 squared is going to be 9 multiplied by 5, because 5 times, sorry, root 5 times root 5 is going to give us 5. So then 9 multiplied by 5 is 45. And so the area of this triangle is going to be 45 square units. Don't worry if you just put 45, that's fine. But technically the area of this triangle is going to be 45 units squared, 45 squared units. And that's all from me. So what I want you to do yourselves is to go to page 99, exercise 5F, and try these different questions 
on this exercise. So question one, A, B, C, D, question three, question six, seven, eight, and then 10, 11, 12, which is something of an extension activity, some harder, more challenging questions for you. So keep working hard, try those questions and self-assess regularly. If ever you get stuck, please come and hunt me out. Come and see me, do not suffer in silence. And even worse than suffering in silence, I think, is just imagining that if you just keep your head down and don't mention it, you don't actually need to know it, it will just magically go away. It won't. What you don't know at A level will come back and haunt you at some point. So you do need to know this stuff by pretending it doesn't exist doesn't help you to understand it or get away with it. So thanks for listening once again. I do hope you're keeping well and safe and you'll hopefully see me sometime soon in the future or if not, please do be in touch. So bye for now.